Can I tackle the presentational and container component design pattern in just one video? Let's find out. This pattern is a key concept in React, helping us write cleaner, more scalable code. So today we are diving deep into this pattern to show you how it can seriously level up your React skills. So let's get... So have you ever started building a React app, adding cool features, only to find that your components become more and more tangled? They end up doing everything, managing the state, handling API calls, and then your UI. It gets messy, right? So suddenly, one small change breaks everything and your components are almost impossible to test. So that's when you know it is time for a better way to manage your components. So this is where the presentational and container component design pattern shines. It's all about separating concerns, keeping your components simple and focused on one thing. Presentational components, these are your dump components. They just render the UI, receiving data via props, no state, no logic, just a beautiful reusable UI. Container components, these are the smart ones. They handle business logic, making API calls and manage the state. They pass the data down to the presentational components. And before we dive into the code, let's look at how we structure this pattern in a professional way. So we will have our components folder, which will hold a user list folder and users container folder. So the user container folder, from its name, you will know that is your container component, which means it will handle the logic and passing the data down. And the user list folder, that will be the, the dump component, which will just render the UI for us. Well, let's start with a presentational component. This is where TypeScript and Tywin CSS come in for that clean, scalable code. So first thing is go to the app folder and I'll create a component folder. And inside I'll create a new folder which is called user list. And inside I'll just add a new file which is called user list. And I'll be using TypeScript. And again, if you're not familiar with TypeScript, don't worry. It's again just JavaScript with a little bit extra type restrictions we are adding to our component. So don't scream at the screen. It's also simple. If you're using JavaScript, just add JSX as extension instead of TSX. And whenever we write some typing uh, interface, you don't need to do that. So let's create our component. And let's first thing, because I'm using TypeScript, I need to add a declaration of type and I will call it user list props and always add i in the end. It just helps me to uh, know what is the difference between actual component, actual interface, if I have to import it somewhere else. So uh, I will be rendering list of users. So basically I will accept to have a user coming down to my component and this user will be an array of objects okay and this object for my example today we just have an id which will be type of number and it will have a username which will be type of string that's all very simple okay now let's create our component so export const user list i'll call my component user list and that will be type of react.functional component and again if you're using just javascript you don't need to do that and it will be expecting props of type user list prop that we declared up there and then here we'll say equal and then we'll pass the prop it is expecting which is our users list and then that will be an arrow function now we'll be returning a very simple UI so a list UL and I will add some classes using Tywin CSS uh, just to help me to have some basic styling without have to write uh, any CSS code for it so I'll call it list slash dash disk and then I'll add some padding on the left I'll call it padding APL5 so to add some padding on the left of 20 pixels okay now Inside here, inside our list now, we'll just map through our users and render a list of the users. Okay, so we'll just display the usernames. So we will say users 
dot map okay and it will accept parameter of user so that is the element in your array so you can call this anything you like and then let's render our ui so our list so it will be allies and of course when you're mapping you have to add a key all the time in the first parent element within your um within your mapping so the ally is the top so I have to add a key and it needs to be unique so i know the users have id so i use that so user id and then i'll just add some class again for styling i'll just use some built-in uh, classes in tywin so i'm just keeping text as a blue and then inside i'll just display my user dot name and that's it so basically oh not name so you can see here because i'm using typescript complaining it says there is no property of name but it is a user name right there and actually even the name here i'll keep it lowercase and i'll use the same parameter name i'm using so this is good so this component basically is a purely presentational it receives a list of users as a prop and then them with it, some nice styling from Taiwan css that is it no state no logic simple right now we need a container component that will handle that heavy lifting like fetching data our managing state now let's go back to our component folder and i'll create a new folder which is called for example user container and i'll create my component there so i'll call it user container dot tsx again if you're using javascript you just do jsx and i'll enter right there so first thing i need to do is i will need to declare my component so i'll just say export const i'll call user container and that will be the type of react dot functional component okay and we don't have any pr no props for it so no props are there, no definition for their types as well. Now I want to render here a list of users and I want to fetch that list of users from somewhere. Okay. Basically that means I will need to import use state from React and also I need to import use effect as well. That's where I will fetch uh, my API call. And this is a standard ways. Again, I'm not trying to teach you other patterns. I already have other videos. So today I'm just focusing about what is the container and the presentational component. Okay. So use state, we need to store the data somewhere. So we use a state to store it and use effect will handle the fetch of the API call. So we make sure we are calling the API when the component is about to render. Okay. Now we come here say const and I'll say users and I'll say set users use state and I will say okay the use state we will be storing here a list of users okay so we have to tell because we're using TypeScript what type of data we are storing so again same thing we did in previous screen you need an array of objects that's the thing we'll be storing with ID of number and username of type string okay okay and then we'll give a default value right here which will be an empty array to start with because we don't have any data yet now next thing is that we need to um, run our use effect use effect okay and we want that one to run only our first time the component is mounted and that's mean i'll add just an empty array as a dependency right here so it's only run the first time okay and let's say for example we have some um api uh, and we are using a method to call it let's say call fetch users oops users and what i will do i'll just come and define the users just function right here okay so this user basically we are mocking now the data so usually is for example to be some api call running but we are not doing that for this video because we're just learning about 
this pattern and not about how to fetch API calls. So we're just mocking it right here. And when you get usually your data back, that's when you set it back in your state and you use the set user you're getting back from your state to help you set that data back in this state users right here. Okay, great. So up to now, it's very simple and easy. Now to the thing why we are using this as a container. So we have a return function. We will return our UI and what we'll say, okay, I'll add some styling again. I'm just using Tywin CSS. I don't want to see me typing all these boring things. Or what I'm doing is that having a div, which have some style, then a title and user list. And this is where things happen. So we have the user list component. Okay. So we'll come here and import our child component. We call it user list component and we we'll import it right here. Okay. And I think I have some spamming mistakes, so I'll just do like that. And if you remember, we said we expect a property called users. So we pass that users right there and we give it back our state where we stored our data that we assuming we fetch from an API call. Okay, so let's save this and let's go back actually to our UI. So as our UI run, we can see that is the title, the user list, and we have list of our uh, users. So this user container is, is in charge now of fetching your user data and also managing it in the component state. Then it passed the data down to our user list presentation component to display. So with TypeScript ensuring strong typing and time with CSS that handle the size, it's a both a powerful and a clean way. Now, so why you will use this pattern or why this pattern matters? So by separating the logic, you have the container component from the presentational component. We get a few big wins. First thing is a cleaner code. So each component has a clear purpose, making it easier to read and understand. So we can go here, for example, first thing your code is short and you can see, oh, this component basically all what it does is a fetching some data and passing it down. And if you go and read this component, it's again, very easy and simple to read, right? And you say, okay, this comp all what it does is that it's expecting a property or a prop and all what it does, it just map through it and just render it. Very nice, right? So other thing also to give us is better test testing. So if you're a big fan of testing, we should be, to be honest, we can test our presentational components separately from the logic heavy container components, which make your testing really much easier. And reusability, which need the UI somewhere else. So let's say, for example, you need this list somewhere else. So you can just grab this presentational component and reuse it without any worry about the data that is rendering. So this is a very classic pattern that still holds up in modern React apps, especially in more complex projects in real time. So and there you have it by splitting this component into presentational and container component, you can make your React code more maintainable and scalable. And if you have struggled with tangled components in the past, give this pattern a try. It may just save you a ton of headaches down the line. So what do you think? Have you used this pattern before? Let me know in the comment section below. And if this helped, be sure to like, subscribe and check out more React tips on my channel. So see you in the next one.